Thanks for being here, everybody. And thanks to Gaslight Gathering for inviting me. I was really like flattered. Um, I'm Dr. Artemis Peepers, but uh, without the glasses, I am actually mild-mannered cartoonist Dean LeCrone. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> everybody's like, what? Dr. Peepers is Dean LeCrone? Dean LeCrone is Dr. Peepers? No way. Ugh. And this is the wacky world of Dr. Peepers. I'm just gonna, we, uh, this is Alan Freeman, co-creator of uh, Dr. Peepers and my creative collaborator. And uh, a lot of you, and a photographer, spectacular, extreme, amazing guy. Uh, after the presentation, if you wanted to check out some of his physical prints, we have some in the corner back there of some of our Dr. Peepers work and some cosplay stuff of me as the Joker and me as Edward Scissorhands, which we'll show in the, uh, we're gonna do a slideshow presentation slash video uh, clip presentation. Hopefully it's fun and entertaining and lots of laughs. And um, what I'm gonna do first though, uh, before we get into all the slideshows and stuff, is um, before I discuss the character and what steampunk means to us, I wanna just talk about this costume quick so I can start peeling sections of it off and uh, do this naturally. So the costume is an amalgamation of things purchased, things borrowed, nothing stolen. Things built for me by incredible steampunk makers, of which there are many to be admired, way out of my league. Um, this trench coat was purchased off of HalloweenCostumes.com. It's from The Matrix. Underneath here, this, this piece with the plate and everything is from a company called Pirate Dressing. Uh, the boots are Demonica boots. The, the pants are from an Edward Scissorhands costume. And uh, the hat is something off a 50% off table uh, that Alan found at Hot Topic. Yeah. The goggles are from an Etsy store, a friend of mine back east runs, and she made those. Uh, the glasses are just part purchased like at a Halloween store. And this is, on my right, is Driggan. And this, this is a puppet. Driggan is half dragon, half rabbit. And, and he's more popular than Dr. Peepers when I'm walking around at festivals and conventions. He's handcrafted by Alf, Albert Alfaro, uh, his company Imaginarium Galleries, uh, Ima Imagination Galleries. Um, you may have seen him at the festivals and conventions. They usually exhibit and sell all these critters. Alan and his wife paid, I think, about $800 for this one. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Is it $1,200? $1,200. $1, but he's an original creation. He's fantastic. And he's a 1,000 years old. Uh, we communicate telepathically. And... Um, his name, Dragon, comes from a girl, this teenage girl, uh, and her family we met at Maker Fair a couple years ago. She said, what's his name? What's your Drabbit's name? He's half dragon, half rabbit. And I said, oh, that's good. Good good question, I don't know. And she came back about 20 minutes later and found me and she said, hey, I know what his name should be, Dragon." I was like, wow, that sounds great. Go write for Game of Thrones now. <laughs> this girl is amazing. So, the, uh, he's pretty incredible. Uh, this robot arm, was designed by Bob Mogg, the Iron Tailor, who sits right there. Stand up, Bob Mogg, or wave to the audience. Bob is an incredible maker. He, uh, you... We love steampunk, and we met each other at Comic-Con. Uh, I'm a cartoonist, and he was working in the comic book industry, and he has 30 years of graphic design under his belt and fine arts, and we were both exhibitors in a small press area. And we started working on stuff together, comics and posters, and graphic design stuff, and then the steampunk thing. So we, we started doing this about six years ago. Uh, Alan had this meetup group, a photography group, uh, up in uh, Ranch Cucamonga, Inland, or in, Inland Empire Models and Photographers. And he said, hey, we're doing this steampunk shoot, and uh, I went up to his studio, and we had actually been doing a DC Comics cosplay shoot, and afterwards we started messing around in his studio with this, this hat, a trench coat, and all these different things, and I started throwing all these items on, and uh, and he started snapping photos of me. That's a before photo, before the uh, finished piece. Um, and I threw those glasses on. I, he, he said, uh, Jeepers Creepers, look at those peepers. And I said, I'm Dr. Peepers. And so we just went with that. And then we added Artemis later, Artemis Peepers. Do um, you have any more of those shots, or is that it? Yeah. So it had a more of a, a western look, a crazy western look. You can just look through these. And these are all Alan's amazing work. 
<clears throat> a lot of these were taken to the Paris Train Museum um, up in uh, Paris, <laughs> California. <laughs> that's Aunt Petunia Peepers. And that's at Dr. Watson's Steampunk Emporium, which used to be in Oceanside. Our friend Celeste Barbier, singer, owned that shop for a few years. And we're sorry to see it, that it had to get shut down at some point. Um, that's at the Vista Antique Gas and Steam Engine Museum, where we shoot quite a few steampunk uh, 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 photo shoots. Fantastic property, all this incredible old machinery and tractors and things. That's at the Paris Train Museum, and uh, that's at the Vista Gas and Steam Museum, Paris. So th these are from like five years ago, when it was more of a Western look before it transformed into what it is now, the character. Oh, you want to talk about, say something about this? This is a, this is a the photo of me. I'm wearing everything, but then Alan added to it. If you wanted to just talk about what your techniques or process. All right, and uh, you saw the original shot right off the bat there. Um, I added the timepieces in the glasses on his hat and all the skulls across the top of the hat, changed the glass, what were in the glasses, uh, wrapped up his shirt to look like he'd been battling demons. And then uh, he had a little uh, stick pin on, but I made it to, I uh, found a spider stick pin that really exists somewhere. And then I just kept altering it. And the texture behind his head, I had shot some machinery at the uh, Orange uh, Railway Museum. And then I just plugged that in and then I roughed it up around the edge and enhanced on things. So, yeah, it took about five or six hours to you know, <laughs> transform. But this was early on, this was like one of the first things that we did with Dr. Peter's ever, so. Yeah. So, and um, I'm like a lot of you, I'm a member of San Diego Steampunk, so it's it's just great to collaborate with everybody on these, on these things. You can go to the Best of Album out now, 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 if you want, and then we'll get into some video, some fun video clips. Some footage. Um, and I've been just developing a, a backstory to Dr. Cooper. His dad was a werewolf and his mother was a, a witch. So he's got mystical powers and uh, the once a, and he's got sort of raw, <laughs> raw power of a werewolf but without the monthly transformation. So he's got the strength and, and the danger of a werewolf but not, uh, not the monthly transformation. And so we've been just working on some fun stuff like that in case we get back into doing graphic novel stuff or anything like that. Um, <laughs> these are all Alan's work. <clears throat> wow. Oops. And a lot, some of these are from Gaslight <laughs> Gathering at uh, Comic Con. And uh, that's me, my molecules transporting into a time travel. And uh, Dr. Peepers is a time traveler as well. Uh, Antique Gas and Steam Engine Museum. You may recognize that from the Steampunk Festivals. What's his name? Brings his uh, time travel machine in the vendor room. Star Wars Celebration. I, I attended as Dr. Peepers' uh, Steampunk Jedi. That was fun. Uh, we have an, an annual Dr. Peepers Halloween party. Uh, the first two were held at Artbeat on Main Street Gallery. And. Um, they were quite popular, a lot of fun, really, really fun. Then it helped raise some money for the uh, the gallery. Um, Comic Con, something Alan did with one of the amazing photos. And so, some of the ladies at the uh, Antique Gas and Steam Engine Museum. Um, and he added all the electrical poles. It's the poster for the first Halloween party at Comic Con, and this is like this is just my hobby, like everybody. Like I, I, I do this for fun, and it's great to team up with people and get crazy and add. Uh, you know, I like all the aspects of the arts that go through the steampunk, and that we can add to this the cartooning, the, um, <laughs> the, uh, the acting, the theatrics. That's another arm by uh, robot arm by Bob Mog. An artist dressed as a zombie. <laughs> Zachy me. Steampunk Boba. Leonardo da Vinci. Yes. <laughs> went yeah. back in time. Yeah, I went back and had that. I went back in time to have some artists paint me. Comic Con. Comic Con. 
the Halloween, one of the Halloween parties. Bob Hog wings in the background hanging on a wall. <laughs> somebody, somebody brought their dogs to uh, Arcana Brewery. It's a steampunk brewery up in Vista. Steampunk Design Brewery. And uh, friends of mine brought their chihuahuas. We had an art show. There was an art show there. A friend of ours did a bunch of steampunk art. And so we brought the chihuahuas and said, Alice said, hold the chihuahuas. And right when he snapped at that one, with the side of the lake, licked my face. I saw the whack, but then Alan has these little skulls on the... On the uh, <clears throat> What have we got, what have we got Oh, it's an Andy Cameron theatrical design sign. What the heck? That's from the Halloween party. We're just gonna go through some of these and then we'll get to some video clips. And that's cool, that's one of my favorites. We, you know, we've sold a lot of, but some of these is poster prints. There are some framed ones in the back. And we put together a collection of book, a book collection of them. And we sold a calendar for a while, that was fun. And that's uh, that's, that's uh, Pug Dog Jedi. We met him at Star Wars Celebration. It was that's the craziest, most hilarious uh, Jedi costume I've ever seen. And that's at our can of brewery. And you know, a lot of you know Lady Mari. Lady Mari with her critter about to bite my neck. Dr. Peepers. <laughs> That's Raina Shmoleski. She's an incredible cosplayer. Spectacular. That's her character, Bolta. Bolta Lightning. <laughs> and we're going to use her in some web episodes. Then we had, we jumped, they, uh, Star Wars Celebration had an actual uh, Millennium Falcon that you could jump up on and to get photos with. That, that's not just a, a screen, it, you could walk back there and the, you had 30 seconds because they had a line for 45 minutes long and you had to jump up there and they were like looking at a clock and then like, ah, get off stage! So Alan snapped that. It was an actual working R2-D2. That was a real Stormtrooper guy. Yeah, a real Stormtrooper guy. It wasn't like a cardboard cutout. He was, just, he was standing there. Look how, he, look how she's smiling. I got up there and I said, this is going to be epic. I want you to look like you're badass and we're going to have a big battle. Come on. And she, uh, and she was like, okay. And then later we looked at the photo and I was like, hi, mom. I'm posing. <laughs> hi, mom. I'm fighting for the Empire or the, uh, the Rebel Alliance. As far as the Empire took that, and uh, Jay Poe took that. So um, that's our calendar. I guess we can talk about uh, Comic-Con. So uh, somebody talked me into dressing as Dr. Peepers at Comic-Con a couple of years. I, I, go, I attended Comic-Con every year as a cartoonist, and I've, uh, in the past I've been an exhibitor, and then uh, in recent years I've uh, been, I would uh, work the Cartoon Art Museum booth. They're based out of San Francisco, and they always have a booth every year. A fundraiser, a cartoonist we draw for, for people for 10, 20, 30 bucks a pop, and then we raise a couple thousand dollars for the museum every year. So I usually do that, and then uh, in 2015, somebody said, no, you should go as Dr. Peepers at least like, okay, so I did it. And, and I, I don't usually dress up. I've been going to Comic-Con for 28 years as a cartoonist, and it was a lot of fun. We got a lot of attention, it was neat. But um, I know it's San Diego County Fair, and a lot of you participated in that, the uh, Steampunk Alice in Wonderland theme. We were, also, we were all superstars for a month. It was really yeah. awesome, just fantastic, wasn't it? And we, we shot that commercial, uh, Scott and I, you, you prominent role there in the, in the commercial for the uh, county fair and their daughter. <coughs> where, where, where is she? <laughs> I'm calling, I'm calling uh, uh, social services, okay? <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> that, and uh, some photos there from the county fair last summer. Alan joined us. Those guys were incredible. The, those circus performers the circus circus performance on their stilts. That was taken at Comic-Con. I saw this big red wall behind a, one of the giant booths. I said, Alan, you gotta shoot right here. And then he turned it into sort of a Tron looking thing. I like that. <laughs> um, San Diego County Fair. But, uh, so, uh, so fast forward, uh, or fast, go back in reverse to Comic-Con 2016. Um, Oh yes, here's a magazine stand, and look at next to the Life magazine, another yeah. Time Life magazine, highlighting Dr. Artemis Peepers. And we just happened to find it there. It's amazing, Time Life covered 
That's in uh, Vista, the alley, uh, alley Art Woman, a big bronze sculpture there in downtown Vista. <clears throat> Poppy Appleton, the legend. Poppy Appleton, that's at our Alley Art Festival. Yay, Poppy! Poppy, married to Cogbane. Dude Vader! Whom I love to team up with for photos. Yay for Dude, Christopher Cannoli. He was here earlier with his huge head. His head's getting bigger. <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> that's, not, that's a double on chakra, huh? <laughs> I think that's what that is. Um, Alley Art Woman. Yes! Daniel, uh, Daniel Hernandez, Tony Court, Margaret. The, those two gentlemen were here earlier. We have way too much fun with this, but uh, Penny Farthing Bike, which I won't. So that is a photo of the five finalists uh, for the Sci-Fi Channel's Weirdly Awesome Costume Contest at Comic-Con last year, <clears throat> and the fair and the Alley Art Festival. So Comic-Con, so last year, um, Oh, oh that's, a, that's on the table back here. That's a bust that a friend of ours, uh, Dan Burke, uh, built and made. He's a, an artist sculptor. It's quite remarkable. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice. There's also a really wonderful um, oil painting back there that another friend did of my character, which is really flattering. It's so much fun. Oh, but yet, with my attachment to the cartooning art of world, um, it, it's just been really flattering. That was last year's Halloween party poster, which was, a, which was oh, so much fun. It was really a great time. So I typically take the week off from work. I also work as a chauffeur. I work for La Costa Limousine in Carlsbad. And I took the week off for Comic-Con. They're really cool about that. And, but I typically don't go to preview night. And, uh, but I was at home cleaning my apartment because Alan and his son and some comic book artist friends and I were going to stay the week. I thought, I'll just stay home and clean. And then about 2 o'clock, a little voice in my head said, no, you should go to Comic-Con preview night. And I'm like, why? I don't know, just go. Okay, voice in my head, I'll go. So I drove down there. <laughs> Parked my car across from Marriott, paid $40. Like, I didn't care. I went down to the Hard Rock uh, Hotel and had a beer. And coincidentally was their uh, restaurant transformed into a theme for the Sci-Fi Channel's new show, was Ben Affleck, Matt Damon show. I forget, they were promoting the whole restaurant was transformed into the theme of that show. Victoria Beard who painted that, uh, and that's back there on the table. Uh, she's an amazing fine artist. She's just, uh, she did surprise me with that. And that's one of Alan, another one of Alan's masterpieces. And that was my thank you for attending my peepers party that Alan made. And Alan did just like, none of this would be possible without Alan Freeman, I'm telling you. This is, this is this, did fantastic. So I'm having a beer, and after a beer, you know, uh, after a beer, I, uh, a little boy said, no, go get the costume. I know you brought it, because <laughs> it was in my car. <laughs> And I and put it on and go to Comic Con preview night. I was like, nobody dresses up on preview night, but uh, okay. So I went over there, I got the costume, and I walked over there. Do do do. I no longer step in front of the convention center when the, I see it's the Sci-Fi Channel and they are the cameras, and they're like, hey you! Oh my gosh, we can't find anybody to let's interview you and film you. We, we can't. We, this is great, and and so I'm like, oh okay. And so I, you know, walk like this and do this and say this and a little like. 15 minute thing and they're having me do stuff and that clip aired like I guess the next night and it was like a two minute thing they edited it down to and that was fun but they were like hey we want to nominate you for our costume contest uh sci-fi trolley candy company <coughs> costume contest i was like oh okay well uh sounds good and they're like meet us at the hard rock hotel in the morning because we're going to be doing a big promotion and nominating other people i was like okay i'll be there so the next day i drive down and Park at the Marriott again and pay $40. I'm using my credit card to pay this hand handsome amount for this, this parking. And I go to the Hard Rock Hotel and outside there's the Trolley Candy Company with all these weird costume characters and they're nominating people on the streets and they see me and they bring me in for another interview and Sci-Fi Channel's there. And that was it. And they said, you can tell your friends to go and vote on the Trolley Sci-Fi uh, page that we're promoting again. And I sent a couple of Facebook announcements like, hey, vote for me, I'm in this contest. And then we didn't think about it for a couple of days because we thought, Oh right, the 52-year-old guy in a steampunk costume is going to get nominated over all the very beautiful young people and, and ladies in those wonderful costumes. You know, it, 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 we were just laughing about it for two days. We thought it was just whatever. So, so Friday evening, I come home uh, back to the apartment, and the guys are all hanging out, and. And I go to check my voicemail, and there's this voicemail from uh, this gal from the Sci-Fi Channel, and it said, Hi, Dean, you made it into the top five. 
And if you like to be on the TV show, come on over to the Marriott Saturday morning. And, and I was like, nah. <laughs> but I said, I was like, what the heck? I was gobsmacked. I went to the living room, I told Alan and his son and our comic book artist friend, Michael Oshanker, I was like, guys, I just got, I mean, it's in the top five. And they're like, what? What? Because <laughs> there's really so many amazing costumes in Comic Con. I mean, this is, this is not even, like, it's just mind-blowingly fantastic stuff. It's like, so I was in the right place at the right time. Um, so the next day, me and Alan and Victoria Bearden, who did the oil painting, and his son, Dustin, we went over to the Marriott, and there was all these other five or six or seven contestants, and hung around the lobby for a while, and the guy from the Sci-Fi Channel comes marching in at some point and said, you three, me and two other uh, young ladies, said, uh, you got to be. And, uh, okay, well, what about them? We we're like, our new friends, the other contestants. Said, oh, well, they'll be brought up now, uh, in a little bit, but you, you three need to come with me. We're like, okay, girl. And we go up the elevator into this amazing green room. It's like, they took over a room like this and decked it all out like the Sci-Fi Channel's like Hollywood access green room. And, we're, and they set us down in this, in this uh, booth, and the guy kind of leaned in and he goes, because oh, we're like, where's everybody else, mister? You know, <laughs> we're just so, and the other two gals, uh, she, uh, she's from North Dakota, and it's like one of her first Comic Cons, and she's gonna be on national television, and she was a sweetheart, and um, I, her name is Isis, she had these wings, she bought at the Party City or something. <laughs> but uh, they were real nice, and he said, well, now you three are the final. The others are going to be, they're going to, we're going to allow them to see the show. But you're the three final sons. In my head, I'm like, what? What the, the, the double hockey sticks F word? What? So, um, so anyway, uh, fast forward. We're up there for like two hours waiting for the rehearsal to end and then get us up there on stage. And um, So we, uh, this, that's Will Arnett, uh, comedian you may know from uh, yeah, Saturday Night Live and uh, uh, Arrested Development and stuff. He was hosting this live at Comic Con every night on the Sci-Fi Channel. And so... At the end of this episode, they were going to announce the winners of the Trolley Really Awesome Costume Contest. And they had a big dry ice machine, a fog machine. We're back there, they're like, and when we say go, go through this curtain. I'm like, my head's going to pop off. And we come out, I couldn't see anything. It's just all dry, it's like all fog. But the, 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 and Alan and Dustin have been out there in the audience in Victoria for like two hours in the blazing sun waiting for this to happen. Standing. He's standing the whole time. And the audience is going insane. It's like, oh, it's like, it's like they rounded up the frat guys from all the local colleges or something. It was insane. It's like, I can't see anything, and this audience is going nuts. And then and they, they make the announcement, and they, I won what's on the table over there, Trolley Candy Company. <laughs> this, this giant sculpted uh, uh, gummy trolley candy worm uh, gummy unicorn head. So... Um, <laughs> I, I was, it was, and then afterwards, I was on the post uh, uh, Comic Con live at Comic Con show with Katie Wilson and Andre. Uh, he go back, uh, Andre. Uh, forget he calls himself the Black Nerd. He's got a major following. He does a, a blog and all kinds of podcasts and stuff. Andre Meadows, that's his name. And they interviewed me for about ten, eight to ten minutes, or something like that. It was really flattering. It was a lot of fun. Well, prior to that, the producer she said, "Hey, are you excited? You won?" I said, "Yeah." I said, I'm 52 and I've been participating as a cartoonist down in the exhibit hall for 28 years and uh, um, I finally conquered Comic Con because I've never really had any real <laughs> genuine success as a cartoonist other than freelance work. And she was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So during the interview on the couch, there's this big screen and they were scrolling like uh, tweets. People were tweeting during the live broadcast. And, uh, and then the producer sitting off the side with a dry uh, race board, like, just telling the posts, you know, hey, ask this, talk about this. At one point she wrote a note and held it up and was kind of trying to get my attention. And it said, tell them about your Comic-Con experience. And it was like, okay, so I told that story you know, about how uh, uh, you know, 28 years and I finally conquered Comic-Con. And they were like, oh, the old guy, he's so sweet. <laughs> you know? That's not what they said, but you know, they're so much younger than me, it was fun. And uh, there, when I when I told them how old I was, I'm sure the 18 to 35 demographic just went dropped that right, during that pr pr production. Um, so it was uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, oh, the tweets were scrolling through. Those of you who attended the fair last year, will get a kick out of this. So the tweets were, and they would stop once in a while. And I wasn't paying attention to them like the hosts because they were like, so and so from North Dakota asks, what you think of the Wonder Woman trailer and stuff like that. Well, at one point I glanced at the screen and it it, it, it stopped and somebody. John in San Diego says, hey, I recognize this guy from the San Diego County Fair. <laughs> and they, these tweets were coming in from all over the world, and what are the odds that I'm sitting there and I glance at that moment, and that's the tweet I read. It was so surreal, like time stopped, I'm like, 
is this really happening? This is bizarre. Uh, at, at one point when I win, um, guys in the front row start chanting, eat that horn, eat that horn. And I started, I was like, I'm gonna eat the horn on live television. And then I bit on the horn and it's like resin is covered. It's all covered in glue so that it can be permanent. And then I thought, this is probably looking phallic as well. I need to stop right now. So you'll see that it gets a little weird for a second. For the end. All week long, our Patrolli Street team has been looking for the most weirdly awesome costumes. Awesome. Right? The most weirdly awesome costume they can find. We asked you to vote, and the results are in. Are you ready to meet the finalists and crown the winner of Charlie's Weirdly Awesome Costume Contest? Let's do it! Let's yes. Do it. All right, all right, all right. Give it up for your finalists Isis Cress, Dean Lacron, Paige Weist. This. Oh my, this is amazing. That is gorgeous stuff. You guys, you guys, you guys are all awesome. All right, and now let's bring out our deliciously sweet first place trophy coming up here. All right, take a look. Woo, yeah. Yep. Careful, careful coming up, you guys. Real careful. Now, 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 listen, 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 here's the deal. Here's the deal. Everyone looks great, okay, but we ran the numbers and we have ourselves a winner. And the trolley, trolley's weirdly awesome costume contest champion is Dean Lacron. Yeah. Oh, what the? Let me turn it. Oh, gosh. Now, it is my sweet, it's my sweet, chewy honor to bestow upon you this this 20 pound <laughs> unicorn head made of trolley gummy worms. Here we go. Good for you. Careful. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right, all right. And for our second place, our second place winner, Isis, please. Isis is our second place winner. Thank you very much. Right here. Right here. Second place. Well, well no. You're Isis. I'm Isis. That's okay. She's Isis right here. It's all right. We got it. We got it. Here we go. Isis. All right. We're going to give you this uh, one of a kind sash. And for third place, Paige. We pulled a Steve Harvey just Paige, you're, you're going to get also a one of a kind sash. Way to kick sash, you guys. All right. Congratulations. Check out all the other weirdly awesome costumes. Head on over to Petroli.com. And to the cosplayers out there, keep up the good cause. Yes. Yeah. Thanks again to Dave Jean Tolley, Mercedes Mason, Andre Meadows for talking the con with me. Yes. Up our sleeves, we have a look inside the magician's party. We'll be right back. So we thought it'd be fun with go. He looks a ranch cook among us. So about an hour east of him is this desert area. He shoots. Uh, he shoots not, not with a weapon, uh, models out there in the desert with his camera at these abandoned buildings, like post-apocalyptic shoots and zombie shoots. And so we went out there and shot, just for fun, this little two-minute clip we're going to show you uh, Dr. Peeper's two-minute little adventure.
Shoot some more web stuff like that. Uh, I, I wrote an episode too where we're going to bring in Irina Shmoleski as her bolt of lightning character, and she discovers that she's been tracking down uh, Doctor Peepers, and the shroud that that the the, the the creature in that that's actually me wearing that other the gas mask and trench coat, and uh, the shroud is uh, 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 there's a there's a whole there's a the uh, the Drigan the 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 the, the creature creature Drigan. Um, He's a portal to teleportation and time travel that Dr. Peepers uses, and the Eye of Drigan is this, this uh, jewel. There's six of them in existence. Drigan was created by a drunken sorcerer. The League of Drunken Sorcerers is what I call it. And this drunken sorcerer is like, good, there's a rabbit and a dragon, I'm just gonna put them together. <laughs> drab it, you're a drab it, and he made six of them, and that's all they are in existence. And, uh, but anyway, the shroud turns in. It turns out, uh, without revealing too much, the shroud is Doctor Peepers. They are slivers of his uh, his soul, his ego, because there's a doppelganger, Mister Creepers, who ah, uh, oh, there's a whole story that involves his mother and father. Uh, you want to do steampunk Batman yeah, and then the future glue? Okay. So we're gonna show you some clips of us just goofing around with some stuff. This first one is steampunk Batman. Hey, I'm not Batman. I'm Steampunk Batman. Alfred, fire up the penny-farthing bike. I'm going into Gotham. <sighs> Perfect. Tired of glue that dries instantly? Now new future glue. The glue that dries in the future. Use it today, it'll be dry in five years. Used by time travelers across the universe. Future glue. See you in the future. Glue.
Rancho Lodge. We make everything so simple and easy, you'll think you had your own personal assistant. El Rancho Lodge! Palm Springs, people! <laughs> <laughs> We were doing it in a longer version, we, we were going to edit it down and cut out some of that stuff and chop off about a minute or so, but he liked it, so he used it on the website for a while, um, and that was fun. We spent a weekend up there, he paid us like, I don't know what, a couple of pennies? Yeah. <laughs> it was me doing some kind of rap when I was doing the, we were doing a Tim Burton photo shoot, and there's a photo of me as Edward Scissorhands in the back there, a couple of photos. We didn't get to those, Alan. So, set, go. Ain't no part of like a steampunk party. Yo, yo, yo. Ain't no party like a steampunk party. Yo, yo, yo. This is how we do it. Steampunk, steampunk. This is how we do it. Yo, yo, yo. That's what I'm talking about, bitch. Not <laughs> 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 what Edward Scissorhands would say, but. Uh, we had, I had just spent like eight hours in that costume and like, what, the 90 degree weather at that cem at that cemetery up in uh, yeah. Riverside? Riverside? Riverside, yeah. They, they let us do a Tim Burton themed uh, photo shoot. We did a, we, okay, we, we, uh, we shot a, a sort of a mockumentary at, at Comic-Con about 11 years ago called Dean LaCrone versus the Mutants of Comic-Con. It's a 42 minute uh, mockumentary where I interview all these people and it, just insanity ensues and it's a lot of fun. You can see it on YouTube. I'm Joan Rivers, and welcome to Comic-Con! Everybody else is low-life scum. They bow down before me. I'm a professional! Dean LeCrone interviews, dances with, and jestfully mocks the hippest, coolest, and not-so-hip-and-cool costumed freaks, geeks, babes, spazoids, and comic book nerd boys. Dean LeCrone's finest performance since his shirtless, handcuffed appearance on Cops, Uncle Spanky's barbecues and movie reviews. Dude, I just got here to Comic Con. Where's Jack Kirby? Where you guys going? I just got here. Hey, can where can I get my ticket? We have a little screening for it up in uh, Fallbrook, here in Fallbrook, California, and at the Mission Theater. And we, did, Alan and Bonnie flew in from uh, Kentucky, and we stayed at, uh, me and Alan stayed, uh, where did I, wait, well, Bonnie didn't fly out for it. He no. did. That's right. Bonnie's like, go do your weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie's an amazing support of Alan with all this creativity. She is awesome. And she's also a, a steampunk maker. She makes some incredible stuff. She made uh, Alan Steampunk hat. Some of you may have seen him wearing at various events. But anyway, we stayed at the Fallbrook Hotel, which I don't know if it still exists, but it's the dumpiest place I've ever stayed at. It was insane. Even cockroaches are in the parking lot like, you're going to stay in that place? I don't think so. We're staying out here. That, no. And um, so we... This is what got us the job. At this is what got us a job for El Rancho Lodge to shoot their commercial. He was like going, hotel commercials, and he found this. He said, good, I want somebody to shoot something funny and weird. So this is what he saw, what is it, five minutes? We think it's funny. It's shot on a Taco Bell budget with some old equipment, and we were just winging it, and this is the This is the night after you had already done that premiere. So we, oh, yeah, it was the night after the premiere. So I was wiped out, and we just threw this to Paul Brisbane's cell stars and starlets for premieres here since 1971 and last upgraded in 1971 oh hey free internet access is one of part of the many amenities here at the lodge and you get plenty of room to breathe the fresh air out here Next door is the Grand Hotel Estates. They tend to overdo it. Too pretentious, too busy. But here at the Fallbrook Hotel, we tend to let things just develop at, at a leisurely place. For the common man, we like the open space.
We've got an escapee. Release the hounds. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh. Some hotels are way overpriced, but after what you've seen today, I don't think you'll agree that ours is overpriced at all. The room service is outstanding! Lovely decor! I like the paint stain splatter. They're artists. I like to showcase some of the other amenities here, like these lovely lamps. Ah, yes. I'm praying that someday room service will arrive. This may not be Trump Tower, but in some third world countries, this is enough for a family of eight. Serving water is important in the 21st century, but not here at the Fallbrook Hotel. Sometimes it takes 20 flushes. 21. The aesthetics of interior design and energy conservation are very important to us here at the Fallbrook Hotel. Aesthetic interior design. At the Fallbrook Hotel, just excuse me. Nothing but the best! Zenith, finest quality since 1971. Nothing but the best for the Fallbrook Hotel. Your time is valuable. Most hotels offer, what, 700, 800 channels? You don't have time for that. Here at the Fallbrook Hotel, we offer three. Three channels. It's good enough for 1971. It's good enough for the 21st century. Since we don't expect repeat customers, we don't try as hard. Which saves you money on service. Almost what you'd expect. We're at Fallbrook. When they hold the premiere for you, keep you at the highest class hotels. Best jacuzzis, too. I'm gonna up in the hot tub. Oh, uh. Uh. Set you up at the hotel with the best landscaping. They, uh, regular better homes and garden. Not just because of the great rooms or the great room service. This is why we're paying $65.25 per night. Room service? Yes. I'd like your Sunday evening dinner delight. Potatoes. And vegetables with that. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. No, no rice. Thanks. Extra on the sauce. And a salad? That's great. It comes with complimentary cheesecake. Fantastic. You'll be here in what? 15 minutes. Thanks. Now that's room service. Almost what you'd expect. Welcome. It's another fine morning at the Fall Brick Hotel. Jesus! for him.
Alan Freeman. All right. And uh, that wraps up the Dr. Peepers wacky world of Dr. Peepers. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it. This was a delight to have everybody here. And we're going to be doing more Dr. Peepers web episodes and posters and books and stuff and have fun creating and getting involved with all the other, our fun steampunk family. And we could. We could have shown you another 45 minutes worth of, worth of stuff, but we don't want to drag this out. When there's other things to be to be done here at Gaslight Gathering. Thank you, um, so, so, Sylvia. <laughs> thank you, Sylvia. I'm I'm like I need a beer. I think I need to sit and relax. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Gaslight Gathering. Thanks, Bob Mog, Alan Freeman, Bonnie Freeman. Thanks, everybody. And you're welcome to look at some of the, our, our work in the back of the corner. Okay, thanks.